Hi there, thanks. Um, my name's Sam, and um, I'm the Managing Director of Conja. We're a small mobile apps agency based in London. We're two years old, um, but in the last two years we've had the privilege to work with some great clients, um, PC Advisor, Channel 4, Sony Ericsson, and most recently Cabby. 80% of our work is mobile, but about 20% is Facebook as well, so it's a bit of a mix. A um, little, little bit like Cyclus, Cyclus, Cyclum. Um, we, uh, we do various, various areas of cross-platform development. Also, similar to Cyclus, I prepared this presentation last night, so um, go easy on me if I get this a bit wrong. And unlike Cyclus, you have 1,200 developers. We have uh, four. So we're, uh, yeah, we're, we've got a good go. Anyway, um, uh, 2009, we were approached by a self-published author called Susie Cornfield, who was keen to get involved in the publishing space. iBooks wasn't out yet, um, but it looked like mobile, mobile books and mobile reading was going to be big. And so we thought, why not, we'll give this a go. So we assembled uh, two developers, uh, two Macs, two iPhones, and uh, a good few beers. And um, we applied all our brain thought, and we created the, the page turn. Right? Not the most innovative thing, but that's what we went for. And we uh, talked to the client, and we got ourselves a cunning revenue share. And we submitted our fictional book in its entirety to the store. Um, we sat back, we waited, and we contemplated the time and the millions we were about to make. Uh, our disappointment the next day when the download figures came in. Yeah, not so, not so good. So um, back to the drawing board there. Fortunately, at this point, the, um, uh, the iPad is on the shelves now. Um, we've seen the Alice app on the, on the iPad. Anyone seen the Alice app? Few, few people. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful book. Um, page turn, animations, um, interactive elements, lovely. So our author wasn't particularly keen to have another stab, but we talked, uh, we talked her into it, and we said we want to have another go at this. So we knew that cloning the Alice app wasn't going to be enough. We'd have to do something a bit different. So we convinced her to write the story specifically for the iPad, 20 pages long, keeping it tight, with an interactive, uh, interactive scene at the end of every one. I won't bore you with the whole product demo, but if you want to pin me down afterwards, I'll take you through it. But um, we scattered interactivity um, at, across the app, but con con concentrating on these chapters at the end of each scene. There were features that you had to read the story to unlock. An example, the main character um, goes to, this is the app here, goes to break into the bad guy's headquarters, and there's a safe here, and there was clues in the story as to what the password was to break through the safe. And, if they got it right, they unlocked the plans for the Hagoid here, <coughs> touch with Farmany Farts and touch with Mike Mini Grails and all this. So that was, um, that was great. And we put it into the store and we got the balance right this time. Um, within a month, we were new and noteworthy in Apple. And uh, a month later, we were one of the nine top, um, uh, top downloaded apps behind over Toy Story, Sesame Street, and the Kindle app. So that was great. And we, were, we loved that. But what have we actually created? We haven't created a book because it was interactive, it had all these different elements. It wasn't a game, um, because you know, games are games are games. What we believed is we created was a new kind of a new kind of format, something that was new and which uh, which we could bring bring the written word, marry it with its interactivity, and create um, a new kind of reading experience. Now, literature is um, and literacy levels are, are on the plummet. I think today there was a story about only one in five adults you know can read out loud. Engaging young people and getting them involved is really important. Getting them involved in reading, getting them involved in this new platform. And this is a golden opportunity for us to do this, which is great. So I'm going to talk about next. Yeah. So, 50 years ago, children's books, they were right there. And they didn't have much to compete with. You had the whip and Peary, you had the fish and rods, and you had marbles, and a four of other things that keep kids entertained as well. So it was an easy win. It was uh, easy to sell books, children's love. Nowadays, the game has changed. We're competing with this, we're competing with this, and we're competing with these. I'm a huge fan of a lot of fan of Games Workshop, much to my girlfriend's yeah. disapproval. <laughs> um, and uh, I was chatting to a manager in there um, about what kids are doing now and how they get involved in the, the Games Workshop hobby. And uh, very tellingly, um, the guy said, Children these, spend, these days spend more and more time doing less and less. And that's very, very true. So we have an opportunity to bring, um, bring children back in via this, via this platform. Publishing itself is dying. Borders has collapsed. 
And um, I know that Waterstones in the F2 the other day was valued the um, same price as the Premiership football club. You know, 50 million and 53 million, you know. This is an entire chain of books. It's, it's on the way out. And we need to do something to galvanize children and get them back involved. And I really believe tablets and mobile technology is, is how we're going to achieve that. Was developers, creatives, and designers working together with publishers, we can bring the written word back, bring children's stories in, and get kids reading again. And that's something we conjure. We're doing, we're working with big publishers, and um, we're working with small publishers, and we're still working with Susie and the, and the Lost Channel, looking at everything else. But um, that's where we're at, and I think it's a golden opportunity right across the board. And if anyone likes to see a demo of the Lost Journal, or chat to me about it later on, just send me down over a beer. Thank you. Thank you. So, questions? Anyone? Can you say how many demos you've had? I can't um, uh, because I've signed this much paperwork saying <laughs> goodbye. But, um, um, what, I, what I can tell you is we did um, with the first, the first book that we've done. Um, we have a free version which had four or five chapters in and then a paid for version. <coughs> Originally we had two different types, we had the, the light and we had the um, paid for. But after the clamping down on that now, in-app purchasing is where they're pushing developers. We've had applications rejected because we've done light versions and paid for ones. Now, um, uh, I think that Halu um, Lab was talking about the conversion rate. I think 15%, you mentioned conversion from non-paid to paid. Well, that's really impressive. We've seen generally around between 5 and 8% conversion. And between non paid and paid. So there's a, a way to go to bring that kind of content around. So you guys, yeah, congrats. It's <laughs> <laughs> pretty good. And, um, but uh, maybe yeah, I'll have a chat later. I'll have a chat later. Yeah. Do you do any kind of testing um, before you put it out, like with, with users? Users, not in this instance. Um, if the budget would be bigger, yeah, probably. But uh, what we do do is we created um, a uh, a demo version first. Before we commissioned the illustrator to do all the illustrations, um, we had the page turn, we had the, the various items you can move around, we had the lights and all the things that move inside, and we just used very basic graphics and knocked it very, very quickly. So we produced a demo in about two and a half days, which is great. And so we were able to present that to the author, present that to the publisher, and say, this is what we're going to do. And so then the next, it was very easy for them, because they're nervous, they haven't got any money, and they're nervous that um, they're going to invest in this and it isn't going to see any kind of return. So by showing them, we were able to bring them round to this and get them to get them to it. Anyone else? Yes. Is it, it's just iPad, and do you, do you bother going cross-platform tablets? Or? This is just iPad, that's right. Um, no, not cross-platform at the moment. We wanted to take full advantage of the what the iPad could do. We used, um, I don't know if there's any developers in here, we used Cocos and the um, uh, physics engine Chipmunk, and so we were able to use particle effects, we were able to, you can turn the iPad left and right and elements swing left and right, you can touch it and like, this dragon steam comes out his mouth and the kind of things that you can't do on, um, on a cross-platform build. Native is, um, uh, is, is the best way of harnessing all the powers that the tablet or the mobile device has and um, one thing with HTML5, something uh, sick those guys were talking about, I think um, as HTML5 matures um, we'll have more opportunity to create cross-platform solutions but right now this is, um, this is what we're building. Right. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.